Today is Sunday, it is August 7th, 2022, and today I'm just going to set up my site for my HTML practice, and basically what this is going to be is just going to be like a landing page about like a restaurant, and then for JS later, I'm going to turn it into a page about like the cinema um, using JS only. So I'll start with my head tags, and inside my head tags, I'll put in a meta tag, and I'm going to talk about the viewport and about the viewport, I want the content of the viewport, specifically the width, to be equal to the device width. Um, and it, as long as it has an initial scale of 1.0. What this means is that when you are on your mobile device and you're on my site or on this specific site, you are not going to see the desktop version and instead you're going to see um, the mobile version of my site. And um, in other words, the width of what you're seeing, the viewport, is going to be equal to the width of your device, which is the width of your phone. So that why that's why you see the mobile version. So that's all that says or that does. Then for the body tag, I'll start with the container as I always do. So I'll do div and I'll do a class. Oops, why can't I just, what? Okay, container and let me see just go here and then um i'll actually target it using my css so i'll do dot container and i'll give it a border five pixels um i'll do black so i can see it and then solid and then i'll do a height 100 vh vertical height of the screen so that it has some height to it then what i'll do is i'm going to apply to basically everything so i'm going to use a asterisk or the star I'm going to apply a margin of zero and a padding of zero because by default the um, browsers sometimes have a certain margin and padding. So I'll zero that out and then I'll also do something that I haven't done in a really long time but I should put to practice is I believe it's border box, border box or something? Let me look it up. Border box CSS. Border box sizing, border box. Okay. So basically what this does, it just kind of like holds in, you know, the padding and whatever. I don't know. I just need more practice with it. So I'll do that today. So box sizing border box. So box sizing border box. We'll see how this works. All right. Um, nice. So let me delete that. Okay. So now in... So now inside the container, I'm going to have two things. I'm going to have a header, which is going to hold my nav, my navigation bar and my logo. And I'm also going to have a showcase. And I'll also give this an ID of showcase so that I can target it later in my JS. All right, so inside the header, there's going to be a logo and I'll just give that an ID because there's only going to be one logo here. So I'll do logo and I'll leave it like that. And then there's also going to be a nav bar, and I'll give that a class of nav bar, even though there is one, but I like to give things classes rather than IDs. And then a nav bar would consist of an unordered list, that's what I prefer. Um, and each unordered list has a list item. And I would like my list items to be links, right, because it's a nav bar. So I'll do hrefs, which is where the website is going to go to. I'm going to set that equal to nowhere. It's going to go nowhere. So that's what a hashtag means there. And I'll just set it to link, and I'll end that tag. And then what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this a few more times. So paste that here. Paste that there. All right. Maybe a few more times. Okay, and then inside the showcase, I'm going to have um, a class content, and inside here, I'm just going to basically have an H1 that says something, I don't know yet, and then I'm going to have a button, which I'm going to treat as a link tag, or at least I'm going to treat the button as a, or I'm going to treat the A tag as a link tag, and I'm just going to call it button. And that's pretty much it for my HTML, like literally, that's it for the HTML. Now the CSS, this is where the stuff comes into play. So first of all, I'll start with the showcase and I'll target the showcase and I'll give it a um, background URL and then I'll go, I have an image already here. So I'm just gonna right click copy image address from Unsplash and then just paste it in there. 
and then I'll make sure that the showcase has a height of 100% of the screen and the width of 100% of the screen and not really of the screen but um, of the container that it's in now here's the problem I don't like the way that it looks so I'm going to apply an overlay a linear gradient on top of it make sure there's a comma and then over here I'm just going to do RGBA so this is the color and I'll put 0 0.77, 0 0.77, 0 0.77, and then 0 0.7. So 0 0.77 three times, and then a 0 0.7. And then I copy that line, and I just put a comma, and then paste that again. And I'll be able to see an overlay on top of it, which I think is really nice. Now, here's a problem. I see that the header is this white spot at the top, and I don't want the header to be literally before the showcase. I want it to be above the showcase. So I'll go ahead and target the header and set its position to absolute so it's absolutely not relative to the showcase at all and it's on the top i'm also going to give it a border of five pixels let's say pink solid so i could actually see it and then i'll give it a width because right now it's really small and i'll do 80 percent and then i'll make sure to move it to the left by i don't know 12 percent so that it's kind of in the center of the page and then i'll also make sure to move it from the top a little bit down so i'll do maybe uh five percent so it goes a little bit down there's space between that and i'm just going to open it into bug mode so i can actually see what it looks like on a page so it's looking like that so far um i also noticed that the image is kind of distorted so what i'll go um like it's like repeating so what i'll do is i'll just go back to the image and i'll set the background size to cover so that it covers the entire container so now if i just reload it should look like this all right and i believe they are not showing their faces okay so that's good that's not my fault all right now let's see um for the header which is the pink part i need the logo and i have the logo ready here i'm just going to recolor it to be all white so that it stands out i'm going to click on done and i'm going to right click copy image address go back to my code pen and for the logo i'll do hashtag logo because i gave it an id and i'll change the background or at least i'll set the background to be that url paste that in there it's going to be long and then I'm going to set the width to be something like 25 pixels. So I'm able to see it and actually 50 pixels because I want it to be big and I'll do height 50 pixels as well. All right, so now I'm able to see the logo. But here's the thing, in a header, you usually don't find um, the things to be like on top of each other. So I need the logo and the links, the nav bar to be next to each other. So what I'll do is I will look inside my HTML and I'm gonna be like, okay. So if I really want to target my nav bar, and my logo then i have to kind of look at where they are so both of the items are inside the header and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give the header a display of flex and what flex does it allows you to use certain properties that kind of centers and moves around your items and so because the nav bar and the um what do you call it and the logo are inside the header when i give the header a display of flex those items become flex items and now when i do a display of flex the items are going to fall under you know those flex properties and so one of them is flex direction and by default flex direction is set to row which is why they are now next to each other versus you know column which is like on top of each other which is what i had before um if i could spell that right direction all right, direction now they're going to be on top of each other but by default it's set to row so notice that it goes next to each other but if i delete it it doesn't do anything because by default that's what it is now i want um to make sure that the links are all the way to the end um of my header and so for that i'll just do justify justify content which is a flex property by the way and i'll do space between and that puts space between the items the flex items within the container which in this case is the header or the flex container and now it's all the way at the end which is really cool but now here's a problem that i see i see that the links are basically on top of each other so again the same problem so i have to look into my html and i'm, I'm gonna have to be like okay if i want my links to move next to each other then my there has to be a container around my links and luckily for me the container around my links is the ul so what i have to do is i have to go to my css and target the ul so i'll do dot nav bar ul my unordered list and i'll give that a display of flex so now anything inside the ul becomes a flex item and they're all going to automatically have a flex direction of row meaning they're going to be next to each other as you can see there i could also give it a gap of 2em 
which is equivalent to, I think, 32 pixels. Um, let's see. And then I also noticed that they're really at the top. So I could also do a line item center and that's going to center it vertically so it's going to bring it down if I spelt that right unordered list align item center oops let me give the nav bar five pixels white solid all right that's why it's not working so the reason because the reason this is not working is I'm moving down is because the um, navigate the UL itself already is like so short it's like really small the height of it is really small that it's literally already aligned in the center but I, I need it to be like like big so in that case um, I could change the height to be 100% and then that does it for me um, I think that's fine right yeah I think so and then I do want to give it a width of, let's say, 80%. Whoops. Not the nav bar UL, I meant the nav bar itself. So let me go to the navigation bar and give that a width of 80%. So that's like bigger. I don't think I've targeted it yet, right? I haven't. So I'll just go up here and target it, nav bar, and give that a width. Whoops, not that. A width of 80%. So it should be bigger okay great now there's also another problem um let's see i see that now the links are all the way to the left and i want them to be all the way to the right right at the end of the ul or the nav bar itself and so over here i'll also give it a it has a display of flex already and i just have to just justify the content that's not how you spell justify all the way to the end and then it should move all the way to the end if i could just fix that justify content and then should move all the way to the right perfect okay and then let's move on to the kind of the styling so if i want to get rid of the bullet points because if you look closely there's bullet points that's actually a list item property that um has to do with the bullet points so i have to target the list items so i'll have to do nav bar ul li because that's the hierarchy and then I'll just have to do list style, which is the property, and then set that to none, and then the bullet points go away. And then the color and the text decoration are A tag properties, and so I'll have to target the um, A tags, and so I'll have to do text decoration none, which removes the underline and change the color to white so I'm able to see it. And uh, let's see, decoration. Oops, I didn't even target the A tag. Okay, there we go. Um, and then one more thing for the links itself, I would like to add a class and call it link. So that's easier for me to target those. So I'll go ahead and put that here, paste that in there. And then I'll also give this one a class of link and I'll also give it an ID of button because it is going to be a little bit different. So I want to target it individually at some point in time. All right. So at this point, let me look at what it's looking like over here. So that's the progress we have. I should also probably give it a font size, oops, that's not how you spell font size, 24 pixels maybe? Is that too big? Nah, I don't even know, honestly. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, so then, let's see, actually I would maybe just 20 pixels, something like that. Okay, so that's the header. Um, let's move on to the content itself. So the, sh the content is in the showcase. And so because of that, I want the content to be in the middle. So um, if the content is inside the showcase, then that, and I want it to be in the middle, then that means I'll have to use some flex um, display, right? But where? Begin again, because I know that it's inside the showcase, I'm going to treat the showcase as the flex container. So I'll set the display of flex to the showcase and then I'll set justify um content center and that's going to move my stuff to the right right to the center and then align items oops center is going to align it horizontally so it's going to move it down to the center but i didn't even spell flex right that's why it's not working okay display flex and now it's going to be at the center perfect and then i can't i can barely see it because it's black so 
um, and it's like disappearing within the black background or at least the dark background and I'll just set the content to have a color of white so I'll be able to see the something right and then at this point I'll also target the link so I'll do the link I think I had it as a no I had it as a BTN and then I'll change the color to be white here and I'll change the text decoration to be none over here. I'll give this a background of white for now and I'll give it a padding of 10 pixels top and bottom 20 pixels left and right and then the color I should change it to black because the background is white now and then um, for the contents itself I'm going to give it a border 5 pixels pink so I'm actually able to see what I'm looking at and I'm just going to go to my HTML and change something to be something else so maybe like all about dining I'll be able to see that and then I can go ahead and change the let's say the font size to be 50 pixels hopefully that's not way too big all right and then I can change the width of the h1 so I'll do content h1 and set the width to be I don't know 300 pixels so that the dining goes at the bottom that's too much actually so maybe 350 because I want it to be like all about 400 500 sure and then I'll make sure that it's text aligns center so that the center is at you know they're all centered and then that's good and then the button is way too big so I'll set the font size so actually what I'll do is I'll go to where I have the other link which should be right about the bottom over here I feel like that can be applied to everything so I'll just change this to be dot link instead there we go so I also want the button to be like in the middle and so what I'll do is I'll go to the content and I'll treat that as a flex container and I'll give it a display flex so that my button also goes in the center but again because flex direction is set to row the items right inside that container the content is going are going to move like side by side in what in the same row but I need it to go for it to be on top of each other so set that to column and then I can just do justify content center and that moves it towards the center and then align items center and that moves it towards the center like that. Um, and the reason you saw it getting big is because I didn't set a certain width for the button so it kind of just gets big but I usually don't change the width and um, I just do this right. And then I should also make sure that there is a margin bottom. I usually set it to 20 pixels between, you know, the heading and the button so that the, um, what do you call it? So that there's space between, right, the heading and the button. All right, and then, let's see. The button can also be, um, there could also be a hover effect on the button, so when it's hovered over, the background can change to a different color like D3, D3, which is kind of like, an, like a gray color, so that happens. And then I'll save that and see what that looks like, and that's pretty much about it. So, I'm just going to go ahead to my HTML and change these links to be something like home. Um, last one, I always put contact, and then maybe about and then maybe locations and then services 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 all right and then ooh, one more thing if I do this I notice that the navigation links they kind of go outside the box and so to fix that I'll go to the UL which is somewhere over here and I'll set the flex wrap to wrap so that the links wrap around themselves like so and then I'll also let's see let me get rid of any um, what do you call it any borders now so I'll get rid of the border over here and I'll go ahead and get rid of this header border and the border of the content and the container border and then I'll be able to see the final result which is basically this 
all right um i feel like the links are too small so how about i go and look at the links and change it to be something like 23 and maybe i can just delete one like services i don't i don't think i need that here so i'll delete that one and it's looking like that okay so i think that's a little bit better and it's fairly responsive all right i do think that all about dining is a little too big i don't know let me see um can i change the font where's my css oh where's the content content And then font size, I could do 40. I guess that's a little bit better. All right. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to end it here then. Yep. All right. Bye.